Good evening, or good evening once again from the Congregation of St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. Welcome to our midweek service of prayer. My name is Mark Schaefer. I'm the senior pastor here, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this time of reflection and prayer with our congregation. I invite you to join in the Lucinarium now, our lighting of the Christ candle reading responsively from your worship material. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Light no darkness can extinguish. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good to thank you, O God, for creation and for our humanity, for the stewardship you've given us of this planet Earth, for the gifts of life and of one another and especially for your love, which is unbounded and eternal. Living flame of love burn into us, cleansing wind blow through us, fountain of living water well up within us, that we may love and praise you in deed and in truth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to join in singing God that made us to earth and heaven, number 688 in the hymn. Tonight, our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians. If I, speak, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boost, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but, ever, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we see, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. 
and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Please join me for Psalm 139 responsibly. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. You sift through my travels and my rest. With all my ways you are familiar. Even before a word is on my tongue, you know it through and through. Behind and before you encircle me, you rest your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, far too lofty for me to reach. Where can I go from your spirit, from your presence? Where can I flee? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I lie down in the depths of the earth, there you are. If I take the wings of dawn and dwell beyond the sea, even there your right hand holds me fast. If I say, surely darkness shall hide me and night shall be my light, night shines as the day, darkness is the light they be. Tonight's gospel reading is from Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord.
So did I just hear Jesus refer to non-Israelites as dogs? Because that's a little disturbing. Uh, that's probably worth a whole reflection in and of itself, but I'm not going to dwell on that point alone. Because what I want to talk about is the woman herself. So Jesus is traveling in a Gentile area. He's traveling in Tyre and Sidon, which would be in modern day Lebanon. And he's traveling in this region, and a woman there is shouting after him to heal her daughter, whom she says is possessed by a demon. Jesus, at first, just ignores the woman. He doesn't do anything. The disciples are the ones who come up and say, send her away, she keeps shouting at us. And he tells them, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel basically identifying his mission as a narrow one. But then she comes and she drops down before him, before him and she refers to him saying, Lord, help me. And he says, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now this might there have been the end of the story. Most people about being compared to dogs at least especially in the ancient world where dogs were not viewed as favorably as we view them, would have been so offended they might have left. But instead, she turns around and says, yeah, but even dogs get the scraps from the children's table that fall. Whereupon Jesus immediately changes his tone and says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. The part I want to talk about tonight is what it is that makes her faith great. Is it that she believes that he can heal her? She already demonstrated that from the very beginning, calling out to him, even son of David, heal my daughter. She bowed down before him and said, you can heal my daughter, help me. So it's not that she believed that Jesus could heal her, that, made, that gave her faith. We saw that in other stories, like the healing of the paralytic, where his friends lower him down through the roof and Jesus is impressed by their faith. It's not simply that she believes. It's that she has, well, the technical theological term for this is chutzpah. It's a Hebrew word that means audacity, and that's what she has. She dares to challenge him. She dares to say, yeah, but. She dares to talk back to Jesus the way that the prophets sometimes talk back to God. She dares to say, I know that you can heal, and I know that you ought to. I know that God's healing power and grace should be available to my daughter, and I'm daring I'm bold enough to ask for it. Audacity. We could use a little more audacity in our faith, I think. See, we heard also in Paul's letter to the, to the um, what is it, Corinthians, <laughs> first Corinthians, um, when he did that famous poem, by the way, that we hear at weddings all the time about love, but it says something interesting toward the end, or right toward the middle. It says that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And as I reflect on that, I think about the nature of hope. Because hope is not optimism. Hope is not assuming things will get better. Hope is daring to live as if they will. Hope is audacious. Hope looks at the world and doesn't say, it'll turn out okay. Hope looks at the world and acknowledges all its brokenness, acknowledges all its suffering, and dares to live a life of faith in spite of that. That's what's so audacious. That's what is so faithful about the woman's response. She's been turned away, probably not the first time a Canaanite has been turned away by an Israelite, probably not the first time an Israelite has been turned away by a Canaanite. That might have ended the encounter there, but she persists. 
she continues, she dares to demand healing. And Jesus rewards her faithfulness. There's a lot going on in the world right now. There's a lot of reason for us to just kind of chalk it up to the brokenness of the world and turn around and say, well, I guess that's not going to work out the way we would like. But our faith is an audacious one. Our faith is one that dares to believe that God is at work, that dares to live as if God's reign is coming, that dares to act as if justice, peace, hope, love all have the final word. We dare to say, yes, but when the world tells us something is impossible, when the world tells us inequities in life are just the way it works, we say, yes, but when the world tells us, yeah, but there will always be poor people, we say, yes, but when they say, well, some people just, you know, they're not meant to be accepted in polite society, we say, yes, but that's the audacity of faith. That's the audacity the Canaanite woman has. That's the audacity we must claim if we would ever hear Christ say to us, people, great is your faith. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather this night as your people to reflect upon your word and to hear the call you have placed upon our hearts. We gather this night carrying upon those hearts the cares of the world, cares for those whom we love who are sick, cares for those who are in need of mental and emotional support, cares for those whose relationships are strained, cares for those who are out of work, who are struggling to make ends meet, care for those who are being discriminated against, 
care for those who are the victims of racial injustice, care for those who suffer, care for those who are victims of disaster and tragic circumstance, care for those who are the victims of war and famine and poverty. Lord, the world keeps insisting that this is the way of the world. Give us the audacity to live into something else. Give us the audacity to hope. Give us the audacity of faith, not just to say the words that we claim to believe, but to live into them. Give us the audacity to demand that those who have little be cared for. Give us the audacity to demand that those who are deserving of love receive love. Give us the audacity to demand that those who are deserving of dignity receive dignity. Give us the audacity to demand that those who are deserving of peace find peace. Help us, O oh God. Embolden us that we might claim truly that faith that you have called us to, that we might witness to your son's love and grace, his awesome healing power, and his triumph over death itself. We pray all these things to you in his name, in whose life, death, and resurrection we have our hope, and in whose words, the words he taught us to pray, we now pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now as we leave this time together, we go out into the world to live out an audacious hope, an audacious faith. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit go with us, now and always. Amen. Amen.